Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Techie podcast. Today, we're going to go through once again the art of worldly wisdom, the summary that I've actually started before I started How to Influence, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Um, but I've kind of intersected Dale Carnegie's book just because of my own interest. But today, this is what we're going to go through and this is what we're going to talk about. So, see you after the intro. The intro while I am actually searching for the summary um it was by baltasar gratian or something like that you know something quite similar to that um so which was as well on the powermoose.com site and there it is so if you want to see some pretty great book summaries i can recommend the powermoose.com site i can also recommend a video that i've recorded now actually kind of a year ago a bit more uh, where I've went through all the summary sites that I have used over time and well over these three four years that I've been doing the podcast now and uh, yeah pretty amazing sites and pretty useful to just you know get the key uh, key ideas of a certain book also to decide for example whether this is a book that you want to buy um, since especially when you're buying the printed version it can be expensive depends on the book obviously but um, most often it is rather useful unless you tend to forget about the contents or the things that you're reading about fairly easily and um, then I would also highly recommend maybe using both reading the book to just get the whole experience but then after um, certain amounts of time maybe also summarizing it yourself going through the summary or summaries to remember those key aspects, those very important points there. But yeah. Um, the WIIFT, I think this is something we went through, smoke and mirror strategies. Don't be fooled by appearances, keep things strategically complex, use absence to win respect, uh, be bad to be good, don't be all above. I think this is where we have stopped actually. Don't be bad by being too good. Passive style, how to overcome timing strategies. Um, timing strategies, this is definitely something we did not go through yet. So let's actually, you know, maybe rehearse, if I've already went through it, the bad to be good section since I, I do quite believe that it is a really good one since I have gotten new insights into this subject relatively late, lately, I guess. And so I think it's uh, pretty useful and pretty smart to go through that. So, the following maxims are reminiscent of Machiavelli's A good man is ruined among the great number who are not good. And they can be grounded into this website's core value that to be good, you need to be bad. Know how to show your teeth. Like love, courage is no choking matter. If it yields once, it will have to yield again and again. The same difficulty will have to be conquered later on and it would have been better to get it over with. The mind is bolder than the body. So with the sword, the mind is bolder than the body, period, by the way. Uh, so with the sword, let it be shattered or sheathed. In prudence, I don't fucking know, ready for the occasion, it is your defense. A weak spirit does more harm than a weak body. Many people with eminent qualities lacked this prior or brio. Uh, apparent to be dads and were buried in. I uh, guess I fucked up. To be good, you first need to be bad. Here is why. I'm very sorry. Uh, many people with eminent qualities lack this brio. Appeared to be dead and were buried in their lassitude. Uh, provided nature resourcefully joined the sweetness of honey with the sting of the bee, you have both nerves and bones in your body. Don't let your spirit be all softness. Yeah, you know, this by the way is something that I tend to do. I tend to be really soft around people, even if it is indeed something that I personally do not enjoy myself regarding certain aspects of life you know for example when i'm asking for feedback i don't want to have honest fucking feedback i don't want to be fucking sugarcoated 
I don't like that shit. If it is bad, I want people to tell me that it is bad. And if it is good, likewise. On the other hand, when I am doing something and I'm not asking for like feedback, I do want people to tell me whether what I am doing is bad or isn't. You know, if it is just not bad, then well, shut up. I, I don't care then. But if it is bad and I clearly do not see it and one sees that I'm not seeing that, then I certainly do appreciate people pointing it out to me. And really good people also do so. You know, they point out, well, ah, this is not good. You know, what you're doing, it is amoral. It is, you know, something you should not be doing and so on and so forth. Anyway. Um, what is it? Don't be all above. Let's take guil. Maybe this guilt? I don't fucking know. <laughs> of the serpent alternate with the innocence of the dove. No one is easier to fool than a good man. The person who never lies believes others. The person who never lies believes others easily and the one who never deceives trusts others. Being fooled isn't always a sign of foolishness. Sometimes it shows goodness. Two kinds of people are good at foreseeing danger. Those who have learned at their own expense and the clever people who have learned a great deal at the expense of others. Don't be so good that you give others the chance to be bad. Be part serpent and part dove, not a monster, but a prodigy. I do indeed remember that. I'm very sorry, by the way. I should indeed manage your blah, 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 blah. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, I would say this as well. Um, I do like being good and I do also suggest being good, but um, giving other people the ability not to be good just because you are does really not make any sense. And um, well, I would also argue that for the long term, it is better to tell them that, you know, what they're doing in brackets with you um, is not the smartest thing to do. And if they do it to somebody else, this might really backfire. So it really does make sense to, to, to point that out theoretically at least. You know? If you're doing this or not, heavily and highly depends on who you are and how you live a life and what you value and um, how assertive you are. But um, I mean, if somebody is just clearly trying to push you over and whatnot, you know, pointing it out as nicely and as conflict uh, ditching as possible, really is a good idea, you know, because they notice, well, okay, people actually notice that I'm a piece of shit, so I maybe shouldn't be doing this. And so in the real end, you're able to, to change somebody to the good eventually or essentially, but yeah. But I really dislike conflict, by the way. Don't be bad by being too good. You will be if you're never if you never get angry. Those who feel nothing are not really people. They don't always act that way out of insensitivity, but often out of stupidity. To feel strongly when circumstances call for it makes you a person. Even birds poke fun at scarecrows. To alternate the bitter with the sweet shows good taste. Sweetness alone is for children and fools. It is great evil to be it is a great evil, I'm sorry, to be so insensible that you lose yourself by being good. Also read How to be Assertive, the Dormat Syndrome or Over Passiveness, uh, which this maxim refers to, Passive Style, How to Overcome the Dormat Syndrome, and so on and so forth. Yeah, you shouldn't be a doormat. Uh, I mean, one should also have, like, personality and, I guess, it should just also be clear that if people fuck with you, that it's not going to be a good idea. I do, though, uh, recommend to have a high tolerance for that. Um, what I mean is, uh, you know, just because somebody's doing X, Y, or C and then being just completely angry and fucked up and whatnot, well, I wouldn't say that this shows particular strength in character. You know, quite the opposite indeed. But um, if you are, um, well, if, how should I say, um, 
if you're able to to take certain hits and take certain things but uh, you know at some point you think well you know maybe it is a good idea to tell people that you know x y and c is not a good idea um especially not with you um well you could actually also point that out in a very subtle way you know just by the way i tend to be a pretty whatever person i don't know and then uh well they notice and see that um, you know you have character and you are a person and you can be strong and well I certainly think as well that we all can be so yeah timing strategies these maxims are about timing including negotiation so short-term interest with long-term ones to maximize lifetime success finish off well the important point is not the vulgar clause on entrance but uh, what that comes to, ne to nearly all, but the general feeling at exit. Yes. By the way, this is also something that I think about in terms of, I don't know, when you're talking to a person and it ends on a really good note, it is certainly going to be a pretty good idea, or it certainly is a pretty good idea to, to, to really try to do so. Um, on a really nice note, on a really good note, because then the uh, well, the chance is way higher that the next conversation is going to start with such a good note. Of course, um, conversations are having ups and downs. You know, maybe there are some some pauses, um, some cringy ones, or some some other stuff going on. I don't fucking know. But I think it really does make sense to end it on a good note. And I have certainly also felt that it is a good idea, and that it just makes things better if this is the case. Renew your brilliance. Excellence grows old and so does fame, so be reborn. That renew your brilliance, dawning many times like the sun, only changing your surroundings. So be reborn, that renew your brilliance. Hmm. Yeah, I mean I get it, but does anybody do so? Wouldn't say so. Don't wait to be a setting sun. It is a maxim of prudent people to abandon things before being abandoned by them. You should make even your end into a triumph. At times the sun itself retires, being a cloud, so that no one will see it fall and it leaves us wondering whether it has set or not. Avoiding sunsets, avoiding sunsets so as not to burst with misfortune. Don't wait for people to turn their shoulders on you. They will bury you alive to your regret that to renown. The prudent know when to retire a racehorse and do not wait for him to collapse in the middle of the race to the lava of all. Let beauty shatter the mirror cle cleverly at the right time and not too late when she cannot bear the truth. Well, yeah, you know, this essentially is what I thought about when I said, well, one should have a high tolerance for things and, you know, take a few hits and whatnot, but I think um, the longer you wait, the longer you wait to, to show your boundaries and um, show like certain things that people should not be doing to you, um, I guess the, the, like, the more likely it is that it's really going to hurt those people, I guess. I mean, if you're in the fir very first beginning, say, okay, um, I hate this, that, and the other thing. And when you do this, that, and the other thing, this is just, you know, not going to be good, it's not going to work out, it's not going to be whatever, I don't fucking know. Um, but, yeah, you know, if you wait a long time, then it might actually backfire quite a bit. Might. In prosperity, prepare for adversity. In the summary, this advice, advice, yeah, wise, to provide for winter, and it is easier to do so. Favor, favors are less expensive, and friendships are Bound it. It is good to save up for a rainy day. Adversity is expensive and all is lacking. Retain a store of friendly and oblite persons. The day may come when their price will go up. Low minds never have friends. In luck they will not recognize them and in misfortune they will not be recognized by them. Yeah. I get it. You know, sometimes it's it's fairly easy. You know, certain times are fairly easy, but one should also think about what is next. After, a, well, maybe a particular good day, what is my next day going to look like? What have I planned? Have I planned something? 
can I do something? And then, um, you know, one should really indeed do so as well, you know, planning something. But, yeah, maybe I'm going to ride my bike in the weekend. It would actually be a blast. I would really like that. But then I would certainly have to reorganize things, I guess, in a particular way. Today is Wednesday. Hmm, never mind. Note, some people grow conceited in success. Instead, that is when you should be making more friends and allies. Yeah, you know, then using your power and using uh, what you have. Adapt to what works today. Original title, live practically. Even knowledge has to be in the fashion and where knowledge is uncommon, feign ignorance. Ways of thinking change and so does taste. Don't think like an ancient, taste like a modern. Count heads. That is what matters in all things. We, when you must, follow the common taste and make your way toward eminence. The wise adapt himself to the present, even when the past seems more attractive, both in the clothes of the soul and in those of the boy. This rule for living holds for everything but goodness, for one must always practice virtue. Many things have come to seem old-fashioned, speaking truth and keeping your word. Yeah, I would say this as well. Um, I don't know, like just be, a, maybe even a virtuous person might be a pretty well describing word or phrase to 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 say what I'm having in my mind. Um, and this essentially, well, um, I mean, which certainly for me includes being a nice person, being a generous person, but still, um, what I really want to focus on, just not, not being a pushover, you know, not being this person that, um, you know, people can do everything to you, there's not going to be any boundaries, there's not going to be anything, there's not going to be whatever the fuck, I don't fucking know. There should be certain boundaries, there should be certain things that, that you point out like, okay, this is a thing, this is not okay, don't do that again. But of, of course, also communicating that in a way that uh, like makes sense. You know, you're not gonna fucking shout at people or some shit. Um, but on the other hand, being as good as you can be, and um, yeah, don't step into the huge gap left by someone else. If you do, be sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh. You have wood enough talents merely to equal your predecessor. You must be worth twice as much to fill a great va vacancy. It's hard, but the, va the past always seems better. It isn't enough to equal your predecessor, but the person who goes first has an advantage. You need extra talent to expel him from his superior reputation. This is the don't step into a great man's shoes in the 48 laws of power. But I would certainly also say, like, I don't know, like, go your own path and build your own path. You are you and this other person is this other person and you have completely different qualities and characteristics and a completely different personality than the other person is having. So um, being inspired and, and getting inspiration and knowledge and wisdom and uh, information, yeah, it's a really good idea. But, you know, in the very end, you are somebody else and you are you period, and that is good as it is. Be slow to either believe or love. But don't cast doubt openly on the truthfulness of others. So when you treat someone like a liar or insist he has been deceived, you add insult to injury. <laughs> and not believing others implies that you yourself are deceitful. Note, this is a mix of timing and social strategies. Take note of the social strategy aspect, which is equally important. Prepare for love and hate to switch. Neither love nor hate forever. Treat your friends as though they could become your worst enemies. Since this happens in reality, let it happen in foresight. We shouldn't give arms to the turncoats of friendship. They will wage the worst sort of war with them. 
On the contrary, when it comes to enemies, leave the door open to reconciliation. The door of Galarenti is the surest one. The pleasure of revenge often turns into torment and the satisfaction of having harmed someone often turns to pain. Yeah, um, certainly, I mean, the last sentence especially is just the truth and it's just what it is. Um, keep that in mind. It's, uh, I don't know, like... You know, revenge and thinking, okay, you know, if I just do this, that, and the other thing, I'm just going to be so happy and whatnot. Most often, what it is about revenge or what it is about just buying something, materialistic stuff, um, it is not going to be the case, you know. We are actually relatively bad at foreseeing uh, the things that are going to make us happy in the future and stuff. So, um, certainly something to keep in mind and certainly something to... Um, you know, not forget about. On the other hand, I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I tend to be someone that is quite open about things to people. And maybe I also tend to trust people fairly easy. Um, well, yeah, period, I guess. Um, but of course, you know, I, I still do have some doubts and I, like, I don't know. I mean, on the other hand, I do not have any information about me or I couldn't give anyone, like, information about me that is going to ruin me or going to make me unha unhappy in the end, uh, which certainly is also about just being fine with who you are and, and what you did and what you do and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, unless it is something, you know, criminal and shit, I, maybe this is not too smart, um, but I don't know. I mean, if you nobody for if you if you nobody if you know somebody for an extended period of time, I don't know. You can really fucking trust them. I don't know. Maybe I've actually just been really lucky with the people that I've met in my life. This is certainly also the truth, and this is certainly also the case. But still, I don't know. You know, not a big fan of uh, I don't know. Just you know, not trusting anyone and being like. Whatever, decide for. With this being said, I'm going to see you the next time. Bye. Bye.